In this module, we're going to derive the LM curve. That stands for liquidity money. I don't know if that's a great name, but it stands for liquidity money. And we're talking about the market for money in this panel. And then the ISLM model over here, we're just looking at the LM for this module. The market for money, we have interest rates here, and we have the quantity of money here. And we should note that interest rates also carry across to here. So this axis informs this axis before we looked at the AE model and how this axis on GDP informed this axis. So this is a neat model because the ISLM model is getting information for part of its information from the mar market for money and part of it from the AE model. Anyway, we'll put all that together in the next module, but let's start here with the market for money. And we know we have a downward sloping demand for money curve. If interest rates are really high, I suspect you won't carry any money around. You'll put every nickel you got into the bank to get interest if the bank's paid, for example, a thousand percent a night. You wouldn't carry any money around. But if interest rates are really low, then you don't care as much and you carry more money around. So MD might be way out here. And that's that downward slope. We get a perfectly inelastic supply of money because this is set by the government, right? This is set by the Federal Reserve. And they might determine at any given moment, well, the money supply is a trillion dollars. I don't know what they might pick. But that whatever number they pick, that's where the money supply is. And then we get this point of equilibrium. And that gives us what I'm going to call I1. And then I1, just so that we have that point. And then from there, we can manipulate income, which is GDP, right? We know GDP is our income. So if GDP goes up, our incomes go up. So we can change income. And then if, let's say, we start with a hypothetical economy where GDP is at $200 billion and interest rates are at I1, maybe that's 5%, I don't know. Then that point is going to be uh, the, the confluence of interest and GDP. But now we can change GDP to see what might happen to money demand and money supply and interest rates. So what happens if GDP fell, for example, to $100 billion? Well then, we know based on rules that we'll cover in class that if Y falls, then MD, we demand less money. So if we demand less money, then we can draw a new money demand curve. I'm going to call that MD2. Just to be complete, let's call this MD1. And then from there, money supply hasn't changed, we're just moving money demand, we get this new point of intersection and I2 becomes equilibrium interest that settles or satisfies the market for money and we'll add that over here just to have a corresponding number. So if GDP is 100 billion, then interest rates are I2 and that point, 100 billion and I2, maybe that's 3%, are on this LM curve or on this line. Now if GDP increases, let's go to $300 billion. Well, we know based on our rules we'll cover in class, if Y goes up, if you have more income, then you're gonna want more carrying around money or more walking around money. You're gonna demand more money. I guarantee to you, if I quadrupled your income right now, you'd start carrying around bigger bills. You'd start carrying around more cash. And we would illustrate that in the market for money by pushing the MD curve out. So now, Instead of moving from here to here, we're going to move from this point to this point, and that's going to be I3, and let's carry that across to here and call that I3, and then this point is right there because it corresponds from 300 billion and I3, and now we have our three data points, and we can connect those data points, and we can arrive, that should be a straight line, use your imagination there, and that's the LM, that's the LM curve, it's a positive slope curve. So last module we learned that IS is downward sloped and LM is positively sloped.